Well, hey, how are you doing? <coughs> Revel one in forty eight UH one UE Hog Hog. What an absolute pile of junk. Now, before I start, obviously, lad that I bought it off, you know, it's this isn't aimed at you, mate, because well it just him You you obviously uh I, I know that you've had it in your stash for a while and it's always been one of them, you know, am I going to build it, aren't I going to build it, I turned up and no to build and, you know, go on, give a, give a bash, then I'll have a go. And, uh, yeah, sound, mate, and, and swapped cash for kit in good trade and, uh, yeah, you know, brought it home and quite look forward to building it. Now, I have built this, uh, I have built the Revel 1 in 24 OG and that is a mu that's a hard kit to build. But it's much simpler than this one in 48. Much, much simpler. Uh, I want to put some stills up periodically. I'll put them up here over my shoulder. In fact, if I just, if I sit here, I'll give myself a, a little bit of wiggle room. Right, so, Yui Og, uh, blah. Yeah, I've got some notes on back. And I ain't got no cheat sheets today because uh, once I'd started it, I just really couldn't be asked. So, post build video, uh, let's start with, so, colour call out, everything but alright, uh, I, I, it was just sort of like olive drab, uh, basically, that, that's all I did it, and then you get your, sort of, yeah, look, you get your cut, you get your sprue guide, uh, section one, office, and uh, colour call out, and, and rear seats, control sticks, uh, pedals, that sort of stuff. You can tell, can't you, even by tone of my voice that I literally can't be asked. It, it's this. <laughs> uh, apologies in in advance. It's it's absolutely sapped the modelling life out of me as this kit. And it's not like you know, it's not like you you big Bismarck, hey Rob, and uh, and sort of stuff like that where it's a labour of love, this is, once I'd started building this, it was like, oh my God, let's just get it finished. Uh, and the photos were few and far between, to be honest. Section three, rear seat, attaching that. Section four, front seats and instrument panel. There is a decal for that instrument panel, uh, but it's just because it's tilted so low down, you can't see it anyway. I did put it on. Section five, engine. Why even bother? You, there's no way that you can open up the sides like you can on the 24 and you can't see any of it. And again, I'll bring back on to the blinder video that I put up previous, two videos previous. It'll be down there somewhere where I was talking about a 1 in 72 and there were no point detailing the office there because the canopy was so small and you couldn't see it anyway. Uh, this is a whole different kettle of fish. It's sort of like, there were no point in detailing this engine at all. Uh, before I'd even looked at the engine, I put the two fuselage sides together and I will put a still shot up because the tail rotor, as, as the bird is sort of like, I'm going to get my camera, is like that, and that's the rear tail, I am not kidding, it's angled like that, to one side, <coughs> and I tried every old trick in book and I couldn't straighten it up, section 6, fitting your engine to your office, 7 is putting all that into the side of a fuselage, and again, section 7, You've got to put your window, your side windows in from the side, from the inside. And what an appalling fit. Absolutely shocking. Now, when I do videos, let me just sort of pause myself here. When I do post-build videos, I do them because there's people like you that's watching this, that's either got this kit in your stash, so you've gone onto YouTube and you've typed in Revel 1 in, 1 in 48, UE Hog, 
and you want to see if anybody's built it and what's it like and is there any fit issues, etc., etc. Or there might be a couple of you that's sort of fancied this kit and thought, you know, I wonder if anybody's built it and let, let, let's see if there's any pitfalls. That's, that's the entire reason that I do post-build videos so that, you know, you guys that are watching this can get a flavour of what you're walking into. I think it's best that you don't walk in blind. If you've got somebody like myself, or anybody else for that matter, that's built this kit, you're always going to get subjective sort of comments and people that say it's the best kit I've ever built and you're going to get some people that say it's mediocre and you're going to get people like me and I will only ever tell the truth on a kit and whether that is contrary to what you think or contrary to what anybody else thinks I can only say what I've encountered for this kit I hope that makes sense so if you've typed if you have typed it in Revel 1 in 48, you are yogging to YouTube because you've got it in your stash and it's at the top of your pile and you think, I want to see if anybody's built this. Stay with me. So section 7 we've covered, putting side into the uh, main sort of fuselage size and then section 8 is pilots. Standard Revel, massive seam down his side. You know how down here, you get that. And then section nine, uh, glue them in pilots. One's got a notepad in his hand. I mean, what's he doing with that? Section 10 is putting your little pin through for your tail rotor. You've got to put that in now. Section 11 is putting the other side of the fuselage and the glass in from this side as well. And it's typical, it's showing you the, you know, put your little bit of tape in and wind it round. Little bit of tape? Jesus Christ, I could have done with a chuffing... 20 pound bleeding clamp to put this straight and a bucket of red hot water i just could not get it straight section 12 is putting the roof on uh and that is again it's putting glass from inside now putting glass in from inside i suppose it's all right but at the end of the day you're always at the back of your mind then just just a note to take you're always worried that when you come to mask it off from the outside before you start painting, if you just press on a little bit too much, you're going to push that glass through. Now, the alternative to that, two alternatives, number one, mask it off before you put it in. Number two, use Mascol. Now, I went for the latter and I used Mascol. And I've never had a problem with it before. I'm just, In fact, I didn't use Mascol. I'm telling the lie. I'm just going to get it out for you now. And again, you know, Everybody's got their own opinion. I didn't use mask I used this. It's a uh, micro scale, micro mask, right? And again, I know that I'm on selfie camera, so that'll be back to front. So I'll stick a picture up here for you. So micro scale, micro mask, and it it's like a blue liquid. Uh, it's a lot runnier than the mask all. You know, the purple one that you can get and, <coughs> excuse me, open brackets and don't microwave it to close brackets alistair section 13 is your front end 14 put your roof on and your front end section 15 put your glass into your doors in fact i had to put it there really didn't i section 16 front window again nightmare 15, uh, putting your 15s on, which we've just talked about, your doors. Your doors can go in either closed or open position. Uh, staying on section 16 is your two uh, glass uh, foot, panel, foot panels uh, that make this helicopter a little bit of what it is. Section 17 is putting glass into door. Section 18 is putting port side door on. 19 is putting your skids on. 20 is putting your engine cowlings on and your rear uh, stabilizers 21 is your armament pylon underneath and i didn't bother with it and I, the reason i didn't bother with it was because by section 21 i was just so drained i'm not kidding i mean i, I literally I, I try not to get mad or angry when i'm building a kit because ultimately it's all being you're supposed to enjoy it 
But on the one hand, I don't bin kits that I'm halfway through because I have got a very strong ethical sense on you've got to see it through for the simple reason being you know every time you go fishing you can't catch a 50 pound carp sometimes you're going to just catch tiddlers all day that's all you're going to do sometimes when you build a model you come up against a real shit fit with proper issues but you've got to see it you haven't got to see it through i've got to see it through i've got to see it through because number one i'm a tight ass so if i've spent 15 20 quid on a kit i might as well just get 20 pound out of my wallet and burn it aren't i you know if you're gonna bin it you might as well just start burning your start burning your wage go to work on monday morning and said don't pay me for the first hour or two Who, who's gonna do that nobody so for me ethically i've got to see it through which is why I did with this. But like I said, come stage 21, I'd literally had enough and it's such a brittle kit as well. Uh, I could have had it, I, I can hold it in my hand. I'm six foot four and I'm I'm a big guy. You can see I could have just literally crushed it in my hand. I was so, oh, it's just so knacked with it. 23, 24, 25 is the armament. It's, your, it's the sort of rocket pods on the side. 27 is the gun feed 28 i've not seen this one before and it wasn't on the it's not on it wasn't on it's not on the one in 24 scale it's sort of like a front mounted well it's like a front mounted machine gun now you do get it in the kit but i didn't put it on again that stage 28 don't forget come stage 21 i want to like, i've had enough 29 is your rotor mechanism, which is absolutely piss poor. 30 is your tail rotor. I mean, even your tail rotor, the stem that you put through, I'm going to exaggerate the numbers, right, just so that you get some kind of scale. So the, the little pin that you push through on section, a, section 10, right, the little pin that you push through, and that's what your rear tail rotor sits on. You know, if if it might as well have been an inch deep, uh, and the rotor itself with the hole in the middle for scale wise, if the pin's an inch deep, the hub that it sits into might as well be like an eighth of an inch, because and then it tells you to hot melt it. You know that picture that Revel do with the hot screwdriver, like you know anybody's ever done that. <coughs> Prove me wrong. You probably will now. Uh, stage 31 is attaching sort of aerials and one thing or another. Uh, and that's it, stage 32, you're on to paint job and you're done. And I mean that in the most sarcastic way I can possibly say it. You're done and I was done. Trust me, come stage 21, I was done. I was ready for just like screwing it up. I went for the Bell UH-1E Huey. HML 267 US Marine Corps 1965. The only reason that I went for that one is because it's got a red tail. I'll put some pictures up here. Uh, it's got a red tail. Uh, now then, I've just posted on. I have just posted it on my personal Facebook. And I've posted it on Club as well. The biggest issue that I personally had with this kit was the fuselage sides. The fuselage side is, as I say, picture magic. It it was so twisted and warped. I I just couldn't I couldn't see to it. Now, I've built the one in twenty four airfix Spitfire, the Mark VB, and anybody that's built that will know all about warped frames with i'm looking up here because it's there with cowlings that don't fit and wing roots those lovely curved they don't fit i don't want to go off track but it, it's it's worse than that and that took that that didn't take you know where, where are they that that air fix it didn't take a spring clamp to get it right it took a it, it took a clamp like a bench vise to put that right and this UE was 
worse than that, okay? Now, you know, yeah, you've just said that you see it through, you've never been a kit. I can't, I just I, I just can't bring myself to to throw a kit in the bin because as as bad as it is, you're always learning, okay? When when you're casting in and you don't catch out, what do you do? You're casting somewhere else or you walk a little bit further down the bank and you try your look a bit somewhere else. Well, that to me is like for a kit as well. I, I do use a lot of sort of fishing terminology and you think, I bet it goes fishing. I don't, but I used to do. So the thing is, is if you don't see it through, you will never know. Plus, we all live in hope that in some respects, and I know this is going to sound absolutely bonkers but we sort of hope that it's going to come right in end and i mean it has come right in end don't get me wrong but anybody worth the soul will look at the pictures that i'm putting up and go jesus christ that's rough as shit and it is it's rough as old it is <coughs> i've got to say it's the worst kit worst kit i've ever built right and me cabinets that are over there are absolutely chock a block now and let me just have a look up there so uh they were all good that were good that were good when i when i set worst kit that i've ever built spitfire that i've got here in front of me it's in a flying pose that was the weren't the worst kit i've ever built it was the most difficult kit to overcome with the flaws that were in it and if you've watched any of my previous videos, which is usually tornadoes, and don't worry, I've got one on order. When you've watched them, and I'm talking constantly about uh, GCU, general cleanup, with flash and shrouds off ejector pin marks and stuff like that. But I've said again, I get that. Because a, a plastic moulding machine that's constantly psst, spitting these sprues out 100 after 100 it's gonna get some kind of shroud of plastic on but we get knives and we get sanding sticks and we can overcome that what we can't overcome is a subframe that's supposed to be true but the back end of it is literally you know, it's literally that far off. I mean, what sort of angle are we talking? What What's that? Is that 45 degrees? It must have been 30, 35 degrees off mark. So, Spitfire was the most difficult kit that I had to build. But I weren't doing videos then like I'm doing videos now. I was just sort of putting pictures on because, you know, I, that, that's what I was doing at the time. Whereas now... I'm sort of I can I've been looking at these video things and I can sort of put slide shots on and one thing or another, and uh, it, you know it's uh, I, I can absolutely definitely without <laughs> question say that this kit I'll show you a box art this kit is the worst kit I've ever built the worst kit I've ever built that's that's not overcoming like te tedious problems tedious problems like flash that's not overcoming that that's overcome this is overcoming really really bad bad fitting i know it's back to front really really bad fitting stuff and like i say absolutely drained the life out of me so i didn't take a great deal of pictures the pictures that i took uh i'll pop up here and uh, and you can see for yourself if you've got any comments if you have built it and and you've thought what's it on about it turned out all right mine were fine i'd love to know and i'd love to see some pictures as well and you can find me on instagram as well okay uh it sounds like i've just had sort of like 19 minutes uh with my therapist i ain't got one really uh modeling is my therapy but uh, all I've done is moan, isn't it, for the last 19 minutes. So let's change it up a little bit. So that's done, right? That that kit is done. It's up there. Uh, and if I never see it again, it'll be too soon. We're done. Right, next. What's next? Uh, I shop at uh, an online store called Jadlam Racing. 
uh, and they do a fantastic offer. Look at me now, I'm all pepped up. They do a fantastic offer where you earn uh, the call them Jadlam points. Uh, if any of the guys at Jadlam are watching this, uh, you'll see I mark and I buy stuff from you. So basically the Jadlam points, so the more you spend, the more the, the reward you. So if you spend a certain amount, you get a fiver off. If you're a new customer, you get a fiver off. If you're a, a current client, they send me uh, sort of like links and vouchers and stuff, uh, and I can send you that, and you'll get a fiver off, and then I get a fiver off. So over the course of the last sort of six months, I've had five people that have said, yeah, go on, Mark, brilliant. Yeah, cheers, mate. I'll have a fiver off voucher. I've sent it to them. They've used it. They get a fiver. I get a fiver. And I've accumulated mine. Now, the more five pound offs that you get, the more that you have to spend. So to get a fiver off, you have to spend 25 quid. So to save 25 quid, you have to spend 50 quid. So I've tripped myself. Uh, I've already done two tornadoes, the Revel Tornado. I've gone for the Desert Storm one, and I have done a Desert Storm one. And it came out all right. The, the two that I've got, because I've done that one, but I've also done... Uh, a really really good missile firing uh tornado nice that isn't it uh but then too you've noticed that they're in flight i've never been able to overcome the wheels on that particular kit not this time tornado not this time i'm having you so that's what's up next i managed to uh, get that kit and a load of masking tape for 25 quid Came to 52 quid, so I actually I paid about 27 quid. So that's my next project. Uh, I'm going to do another video. I will do an inbox review. I'm, there's millions online, but I like to do them. Uh, not that much. I like to do post, post videos. Uh, and we'll see how we get on. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Cheers.